Hi, George Phoebus here. And Joe. And today we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, normally, you see me here by myself. We thought bringing Joanne in would give you different perspectives on what we're talking about. We also, most of these vlogs are about uh, a city or cities in Italy, beaches, mountain towns, and the cave restaurant, of course. Uh, and then we started doing some vlogs about explaining things, uh, differences of, uh, in Italy from America and so on. Some people like when I just talk, some people like visiting the cities better. We'll continue to do both, that way you can pick what you like. Today though, we're going to answer a question that many, many people have asked us. How did you buy a condo in Italy? Why did you do it? And why did you pick where you chose? We're in southern Campania, kind of a remote area, although it is a beach resort for Italians and Germans. Um, but we had no concept of where this place was. So how did we do this? Well, the story starts many years ago. We were planning a vacation with my sister Kathy and her husband Ray. And we were planning to go to Tuscany. And I felt that, you know, it would be better if we found a villa rather than stay in hotels. They're a little colder. The villa would be nice. We'd all be together. So I got on a website and we were looking for villas to rent in Tuscany. And then Joanne. I offered to help. So I found a website called Homes and Villas Abroad. And unbeknownst to me, the website was for purchasing uh, villas and homes, not for renting. So this picture instantly popped up in front of me, and we'll, sh we'll show you that sometime in this video, of this beautiful salmon-colored villa with this beautiful view in all of the orchards. And I was like, wow, look at this. It was a very good price, and uh, in fact, it was such a good price, it looked like it probably was. I said, do they do timeshares in Italy, George? Because this is probably a timeshare, but it's, it's not to rent. And it turned out it wasn't in Tuscany, but we decided to take a look and investigate further. So I contacted the realtor, uh, Louisa, from uh, Property Organizers, and she immediately sent some additional pictures and told me it was not a timeshare, it was for sale. So George and I looked at each other and we said, hey, let's uh, pursue this a little further and see, what, see where it goes. And we, you know, when we looked at the floor plans, they were nice, but the floor plans didn't really sell us. What sold us was the balcony of this condo had a wonderful view of the Tyrrhenian Sea. And it also had a view of all these mountains around us, huge peaks. Uh, we had never seen anything like this. It was so beautiful. So on a pure act of faith, we actually put a deposit down without ever seeing it. We hadn't been to this area, hadn't physically seen the place. We saw pictures, floor plans, and we saw what our view was going to be. And with that in mind, we sent a non-refundable deposit to the owner. And that's how the story begins. So here's the beautiful salmon-colored building, and here's the view of the sea from our balcony, and our wonderful mountain, Monte Stella. So, now they have our deposit. We have no idea really where this place is. And whenever you buy places, especially in a foreign country, you can run into problems. But our problems were kind of like fun problems. They, they concerned us at the time, but we got through everything. The first one was that they had sent us uh, pictures of the sea, as I said, and the mountains. And they told us we were in a town called Castle Valina. Well, we found that on a map. And we went up there and we used Google Earth to kind of look at pictures people had taken from up there. And the water was the wrong way. The water was to the right and the pictures from our balcony was to the left. So that was the first problem. We didn't, we didn't understand how we could be in this town and have the view that they had sent us. Well, we weren't. But it turns out in that part of Italy, everything is kind of referred to as Castle Bellino. And then they have these little fraziones and we live in a little frazione called Valina. 
So they sent us a GPS coordinate and it was the other side of this valley from Castle Molino. And of course now the views lined up and we understood where we were. Still hadn't physically seen the place. So the next step was we had to go see it. So conveniently, we would be in Italy, in that general area. Uh, actually, for the first time for both of us ever, uh, we would be south of Pompeii uh, for a honeymoon in a couple of months. So um, we made arrangements with Louisa to meet with us uh, during the second week of our honeymoon when we would be in Positano uh, and just travel a little south of there to take a look at this place that we were already buying without ever seeing it. See, George and I had never ever been um, south of, as I said, south of Pompeii. I had been to Rome for the first time uh, back in 2012, and George had been all over Italy before, mostly in the north and, and down to Rome, but uh, we had never been south of there. So uh, this whole thing of having a trip to Tuscany with his sister, um, actually it was funny, but it, it led us down south of, in southern Italy, in southern Campania. Uh, so we were really anxious to see the place we were buying in a land that we had never traveled to before and uh, made it a lot of fun. So um, we would meet with Louisa during our, our, our second week of our honeymoon and then we first thing we'd do when we got to Positano was go visit the bank and that's a whole little side story I'm going to let George talk about here. Um, we had to get some money transferred in. We had to open up a bank account so we could make settlement, which was going to be the final day right before we flew out of Rome. So you, you can imagine, you know, we're, we're opening up a new bank account in a foreign country. We're trying to get funds converted and transferred into there so they're in euros. Um, we have to do this before closing at the end of this week. So it was a little nerve-wracking trying to get all this to work. A little. We went, <laughs> we went in and met Paolo, very nice guy. He had all the paperwork uh, property organizers had set up as they promised to have things done. But problems began as he, he realized that we weren't going to be living in or near Positana. We were going to be living two and a half hours south of there near a town of Agropoli. So he said, I've never opened a bank account for someone who doesn't live in this area. I feel very uncomfortable and can't do that. So there we're sitting and saying, oh boy, there goes everything. How are we going to close? We don't have our money here. We can't go with, with uh, the equivalent of a certified check to closing. So uh, Apollo told us there was another uh, Banco de Napoli in Agropoli and it was much closer to where our home was and they would certainly open an account. So since Louisa was coming to take us down to see the house, she said she'd also take us to uh, the bank to get an account open. Well, of course, we arrive at the bank and it's lunchtime. The bank is closed, you can't get in. So Louisa's pounding on the door and we figure we might get arrested for making all this noise at a bank. But they open the door, they let us in, she explains what's going on. We meet with one of the managers in his office and he opens up the account and gives us electronic filing and all the good stuff we need. So now we can transfer our money into that account, then get certified checks and uh, go to closing. So we met up with Louisa Wednesday morning uh, to head down to do our, our bank work in Agropoli and to see our new home we were buying for the first time uh, a couple of days before settlement. And uh, I was really excited about this because it was the first time we had ever driven. We had driven from Sorrento down to Positano on the Amalfi Coast Road, but this would be our first time from Positano all the way down. So uh, the ride was spectacular. George Road. Um, uh, beside Louisa and I, I sat in the back seat um, taking pictures out the window almost the whole way. I mean, we have movies and photos galore. Lots uh, of them. Because every now and then the traffic will stop. It, in May, in June actually, it's early June, it, it's not so bad, it's not so crowded as it is later in the summer. But um, I have a couple of photos also of, of large trucks approaching us with absolutely no room to pass. As I caught my breath in my throat, I managed to get a picture and uh, I totally enjoyed that ride. So uh, we approached and you heard all about uh, 
the, uh, the Agropoli situation, which was very interesting because the banks have those tubes that you get in. It's, it's like a, a scanner at an airport, one of those round scanners. And uh, I thought Louisa would get arrested for the banging she did in that door that day, but it was, it was awesome. Luckily for us, Louisa was there with us because she's uh, more than bilingual. She speaks Italian, English, German, and maybe other languages. But uh, that gentleman only spoke Italian, whereas Paolo actually spoke English. So initially with Paolo, we felt so blessed because we were like, we're in the bank in Positano. The guy speaks English. How lucky can we got get? He had all the papers in front of him. But he just didn't feel comfortable with us because we weren't going to be living in Positano. So it is the way it is. got to follow the rules. It's not our country. So it, we talked up as an adventure to talk about later, which we have many times. So we continued our drive down after the bank and we approached, it was this, uh, I'll never forget this road because we knew it was sort of a remote area, but it was a very long highway, really all the way, almost all the way there. And the highway spanned across a valley, so, or down a valley, I should say. So it was pretty much on, on stilts the whole time and uh, very good roads and we we got off and, and began driving down uh, more of a rural road and uh, we we went up the side of the hill where um, we George and I ri originally thought we would be located and George was trying to tell Louisa we think it's probably over somewhere else because we we got GPS coordinates and this doesn't seem to be right. And uh, we got up to the top and Louise in fact called uh, the, the son of the owner who, who uh, lives in one of the condos. And uh, he, he directed her to meet us over down in the valley and he said he'd take us up to, to the house. So um, I'll let George take it from here. We drove up the other side of, of the valley, up the other hill, and uh, all of a sudden the road turned to... Dirt. <laughs> I mean, Louisa made this right-hand turn, and we're on this narrow dirt path with leaves sticking out, hitting the car. And uh, we, we go back, and, and the Italians call this Strada Bianca, the white road or the dirt road. They make everything sound much more pretty yeah. than it is. Here, it's just a brown dirt road, but there, it's a Strada Bianca. It just sounds enchanting. And it's not far back, but it's it's bumpy, not really well maintained, so you have to drive kind of slow. And all of a sudden, we got to a driveway where we turned right, and you're going down a little hill. And if you go straight, you don't want to come back uh, drunk one night. You go over the cliff, and you're you're back down in the city very quickly. <laughs> but the driveway turns to the left and curves down. <clears throat> There's a beautiful set of gates, and the gates open on command. You have a little clicker, and you go in, and there was the building we had seen in our uh, photographs. And we met with the owner's son, who took us in and showed us around. So we parked the car, and we went on up, upstairs. I was really anxious to see what the condo we were already purchasing looked like. And the view was spectacular and sold the show. Um, you know, you hear all these stories sometimes about people, you know, embellishing the truth or not being honest and, and we had some really wonderful, uh, straightforward sellers who represented the condo to be exactly what it was, which is just beautiful. Uh, I walked around and, and we all know that homes without furniture in look tiny. And I'm sure we all know that unless you're buying a large villa in Italy, your space is probably smaller than what you're used to in the U.S. Um, and probably from watching House Hunters International, you also realize that many of them come without kitchens. Since this uh, space had never been inhabited by anyone before, there wasn't even an opportunity for someone to leave a kitchen. Most of the time, if they have one in, they move it anyway. But we, the kitchen presented as a tile wall with uh, water and uh, gas pipes coming out. Uh, so the kitchen would be up to us and um, was totally unfurnished since we were the first ones living in it. So we walked around and took some movies and enjoyed the view and sadly um, we needed to uh, return back and headed down our little Strada Bianca one more time. and. And of course, you know, after this long day, we were hungry. So we went down into the nearby town of Marina Castelvelena, and it's uh, right on the beach. And there's a beautiful boat area, the marina, and there's beaches, a uh, wonderful place. 
But this was was a little off season. It was early in the season, and it was past the lunchtime, so everything was closed. But we did find one little restaurant open. We had some lunch. We sat outside because it was nice,、um, and then of course we went for a gelato. Then we took the long drive back to Positano. Now, one more problem presented itself, and it was in the backs of our minds.、Um, we had a, an account now. We had instructed to have the money transferred in, but in Italy, it takes a couple of days for the money to clear. We only had two days before closing, and then we were heading back to the states. So this this was really playing on our mind. Um, we decided to、uh, go around and, and spend our honeymoon and enjoy ourselves. We spent the next couple days going to Amalfi on the ferry from Positano, and we went up to the beautiful town of Ravello. And、uh, a million more pictures were taken, hanging, many of them hanging on the walls of our house.、Um, We saw the Villa Sembrone and had a fabulous time. And we, we tried to keep ourselves busy because, after all, it was our honeymoon. We're supposed to be enjoying ourselves and not think about any potential problems that might happen. So, on the morning of our last day there on Friday,、uh, we went down to the bank. We had to go back to see Paolo, and to our surprise, Paolo actually was able to help us. The、uh, funds had transferred. Um, now this is the day before we close, and we were closing on a Saturday in Rome. Sunday morning we were flying back to the States, so、um, we had to now get、um, two certified checks, and we weren't sure whether Paulo was going to be happy to see us or even be able to help us. <laughs> But he did. He was very gracious. He cut us two checks from our account.、Um, we were now set to close. So back to Rome we went.、Uh, the next morning、uh, we had a, a driver pick us up and take us back to the Hotel Trevi. And、uh, the next morning、uh, Louisa picked us up there, and she transported us over to the other side of Rome where our settlement would take place. And、uh, it was kind of funny to find it because the、uh, the GPS said Gira Sinistra, Gira Sinistra, Gira Sinistra, Gira Sinistra. So basically, we were driving in a circle, trying to, I guess, park or get to the building. Maybe it was a lot of one-way streets around there, but it was it was kind of cute. But、uh, settlement was in one of the、uh, an older building with one of those very very large doors with a smaller door inside.、Um, and、uh, we went on upstairs, and to our delight, we we got to meet、uh, a lot of the family that owned the condo. So the The father and his wife and his daughter was there. The son we had already met, but he didn't come to settlement. The daughter and her husband were there, and the notaire and our realtor was with us, Louisa. And although she could speak、uh, both languages, she wasn't also allowed to be the translator. We had to have a separate translator for the transaction. The realtor and the translator could not be one and the same. So we got through settlement, and、uh, and then we were invited to do what. All Italians do after they do something together. Cafe. See,、si, cafe. <laughs> so we all went to the bar and had a coffee. <laughs> we we felt really Italian at that point. Here we owned the house. We're having coffee with these wonderful、uh, Italian family, and I'll never forget、um, the next day we get on a plane to come back to the states, and Joanne's looking at the keys to our front door, which look like castle keys. To, You know they're they're huge, and she looks over at me and says, "What are we doing? Why are we flying back to America when we have keys to our house in Italy?" It just didn't seem right.、It、just didn't seem right. But all the many times that we go and spend time there, there have been since then, and、uh, more of those antics are on my、uh, my blog called mezzojournalliving.com. And George's blog as well. We'll have both addresses below and some pictures at the end. Thank you for watching this、uh, vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like below and、um, you know, join us, subscribe to us.、Uh, we'll have many, many more videos on different topics of Italy. Yep. Ciao. And-
my my messages and leave and parting is never let a roadblock get in your way. We said we'd stop if we hit a roadblock and a roadblock was settlement. So believe that it'll happen. And it will. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. So this is our kitchen uh, before. You can see the receptacles on the wall. And this is the kitchen afterwards. A little different. We enjoy glasses of wine while we see the sunset set over Montestello. An ancient olive tree overlooks Villa Valina until we return.